welcome back to my channel. So you might remember this picture I had shared on the community tab of my channel here. Just asking if you guys would be interested in maybe a simple background tutorial using pan pastels. So pan pastels are a very soft pastel that has been compressed into these wonderful circular little things here. They're not the cheapest. I mean, you can get a whole box of chalk pastels for a lot cheaper, but I will admit, as someone who has used quite a few pastels in whether it just be art or coloring, these are pretty impressive, not only with their color range, but their capability. So unlike chalk pastels, you know, where you kind of have to shave it off either on your page or somewhere else and scoop it up and move it around, you apply it with the soft tools, and it's two Fs, <laughs> but uh, these tools come in a variety of shapes and sizes. I'm using the oval tool for this project because I have some small areas that I'm going to have to get into. I could use the sponge for the bigger areas and then go in with this, but it's honestly so easy to apply. Why mess up a bunch of sponges? Because these, you know, heads here, you need replacement ones. Um, so like if I were to go to a darker color, I need to pull this off because this is strictly for my light uh, purples and pinks only. Same with like I have a replacement for my blues, my dark blues and all that. So that's one thing to keep in mind. But here you can see I have a mixture of purple and pink. Hopefully it's showing up on camera. It is a very pastel background, but this is on purpose. I wanted to kind of just look flowy and magical. And I might even um, come back and add like some stars later. So pan pastels are incredibly movable. Like if I go like this, I have pan pastel on my finger. <laughs> so I always suggest starting on, you know, the opposite of what, you know, your hand. So I'm right handed. So I go left to right. That way I'm not working across. And then you do need to spray it down. I'll usually, if I'm going to go over it with gel pen, I'll put a workable fixative on top. It works great to hold it temporarily. And then I'll do whatever I want with gel pen or stickles or what have you. And then I use a final fixative. I do have a final fixative made just for pastels. I will try to remember to link that in the description below. It works really well for holding this down. You could also just use like a Krylon acrylic finish. Um, just keep in mind it will look like you sprayed your page with Krylon. <laughs> so just FYI. But um, yeah, so let me get you guys started. So again, I'm using the oval tool and the colors we are using are violent tint and viol uh, magenta tint. So they actually come each color comes in four colors. It comes in tint, the color itself, shade, and extra dark. And basically all this is is it's the original color mixed with white to make tint, so tint is always the lightest, or the original color mixed with black to make shade, which is the darker version, and then extra dark is just extra, you know, black mixed in. So for example, let me zoom you guys out a little. Um, Here's my magenta line. So this is the original magenta, that's magenta dark, that's magenta tint. I'm actually missing the violet because it was out of stock at the time. So I only have violet dark, violet, tint, violet tint, but I do have um, grays and blacks that I could always darken this up with. That's the cool thing about pan pastels. You can mix them together, loads of fun. I am using one of those extra large palettes. You can get them on Amazon. Or Blick Arts. So I will link in the description below the colors I'm using. Now open stock pan pastels are definitely cheaper to get on Blick. The soft tools I have found to be cheaper on Amazon. However, if you need to get that $50 threshold or $45 or whatever for Blick Arts, then I would just slap this in there. It's not that big of a deal and it'll save you the shipping. And then the big palettes, as you start collecting more open stock, you don't want to sit there and fidget because they have these little lids on each one. You have to pull those off every time. And it's so much easier to just store them in these huge palette trays. I mean, see, I've got all these ones that broke in shipping, but it's not a big deal. <laughs> but 
I have this palette that holds uh, 16, yeah, 16 colors, and then I can just stack them as I continue to collect because I plan on getting all of them. Okay, so what I do is first thing, <clears throat> so I want to start with my violent. Vi I keep wanting to say violent. <laughs> wow, where's my brain today? Um, I'm going to start with violet tint and I just softly move my soft tool across to pick some up see how it's on there and just move it because you want to get as much as you can evenly just even pressure do not push hard because these tools are beyond delicate and they love to just tear apart on you now I'm just going to put it down on my page and just gently move it around I'm not going to think a lot about it though I'm just going to put it down so I want a nice pillowy effect. See, I'm just smoothing it over, using a light, even pressure. I'm not pushing hard at all. I'm just lightly putting that down. Okay, so same thing. Now I'm gonna grab some magenta tint. Just get that on there. Again, I'm just kind of very gently wiggling that across. And now I'm just going to very gently put that down. This is probably not the best color to do on camera, but oh well. Um, I'm overlapping my violet, and it kind of makes a slightly darker, darker purple in those areas where I've overlapped. See, I'm just laying it down, so I'm going to grab some more of my pink. Now you can dab this on a brush first if you would like. But I don't dab it, or not a brush, um, the sponge, one of the sponge tools. I don't really dab it when I'm doing backgrounds because I don't need that much control. But if I'm doing, say, a portrait or something really delicate where I need more control, I'm going back to my, um, oh my gosh, Violet. <laughs> if I need more control, then I will dab it so I don't have extra dust. But because I'm doing a background and I have a ton of space, that dust isn't a big deal because it's going to get picked back up by my soft tool and just redistributed on the paper. So just keep that in mind. Um, like if I'm doing portraits though, I definitely dab it off. I don't want extra all over the place because I don't have a ton of room. So. This is why I like the little oval tool because it lets me get into these areas that are closer to where I've colored. All right, I'm gonna get some more violet on here. And I think we'll lay that down here. Now, if you do accidentally get it on your colored pencil, as long as you haven't, um, sprayed it with a fixative, although it'll still come up with a fixative, but you can just rub it off with your finger or use a kneadable eraser and just pick it right up. So pan pastels are very forgiving. They erase incredibly easy. That's one thing I love about them. And then once you set them though with a um, workable fixative, that's when they won't erase. All right, so we're just gonna keep moving this around. I'm gonna get some magenta now and get into these little areas. I try my best to not get it on the um, colored pencil because even though you can lift it with a kneadable eraser, it's a lot easier if you don't have to sit there and do that. So you get a feel for it, but like with this oval tool, how it has a nice pointy end, I can get into all these crevices without really getting anything on my pencil areas. And you can also always put color right at the tip, so keep that in mind. I think I'm going to grab some violet and work that in here. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way, so I'm going to move it over. And you can always brush these off. Don't use your hand though, always use a craft brush. These are quite dusty, and like I showed you, they pick right up and stick to your fingers. So you want to be extra careful there. And I'm just putting that down. Basically, I am just switching between the pink and purple 
not putting a ton of thought into it. I'm just kind of going with it. Like if I go, oh, there's too much purple here, I add some pink. And like I said, I try to overlap them a little because it actually creates a new color. It, so it makes a, a slightly darker purple in those areas where I have a lot of overlap. See, like if I overlap here, you can see how that lighter purple is now turning a little darker. So essentially, I am making three colors with two colors. Near the end of all this, I will probably go over it with a colorless blender. Um, the only thing is, the colorless blender does lighten your colors. It's great for smoothing out skin, but can, but can really kill your background. So I don't lay it down until I've decided how it looks because sometimes you can just smooth it with the pan pastels and you don't need to lighten it up with that colorless blender. Sometimes it's better to just go over with another layer of pan pastels instead. But I'm going back in with my violet. Okay, and then I definitely think we need some magenta. I got the magenta here. And this is like a super beginner friendly background. You don't need to have much experience with pan pastels. You can do this with any two colors. Uh, if you're very new to pan pastel, I would stick with, you know, tints with tints. So that's why I'm using a magenta tint and a, a violet tint. And then once you're more comfortable, you can start mixing darker colors together in your background. But it's they're a lot more forgiving if you start with similar shades. And this is actually one of my favorite combos. I've used it quite a bit because I really like the way these two colors play off of one another. Um, my skin tone set has like a yellow, I think it's called yellow ochre. And that one works really well in here too if you want to add a little yellow. You totally can. Like I said, this is probably not the best one because it's hard to see on camera, but hopefully you guys can see the colors okay. I'm just going to keep going through here. Again, I'm not putting much thought behind it. I'm like putting pink here, putting purple there, adding a little extra here and there. Like it should be relaxing. If you're stressing out about your pan pastel placement, then you're doing this wrong. <laughs> Just go with it. And I know the pan pastel tools are ridiculously overpriced. They actually have been going down in price though since I originally started collecting these. Um, and in some cases you can get away with not using the soft tools, but you do notice subtle differences as well when you're putting things down, especially if you're doing more advanced pastel work. So sometimes I feel like it's just better to bite the bullet and buy their pastel tools, even though you're just like, ugh. You can buy other brands of pastel tools. Um, I just wouldn't go like to the dollar store and get really cheap makeup brushes. Um, you know, if you're doing certain intricate work. Now, if you're just doing a background, you could definitely get away with that. But eventually, you're going to have to invest in the tools anyways, is what I'm saying. So you might as well just get it over with. And I can't remember how much I paid. I bought a... Is it a four pack where it had all of the different shapes like the oval, square, rectangle, circle. Oops, sorry for the blur. Um, it had all the different shapes in it and then it came with replacements. And then I also bought a separate pack of just the replacement tips because like I said, these do tear apart easily. Um, and it really wasn't that bad. And then I have the special applicator tool that I use a lot for, like when I'm doing skin work, it makes it a lot easier to pl uh, place like shadows and stuff. And getting in between the pages is where it can be a little tricky. 
In fact, I might break out the washi tape for that one. Okay, so I'm getting this down. And see, like right now, I feel like this is too much purple over here. So I'm going to start bringing in magenta. Yeah, I was either thinking of some white gel pen stars, or maybe even just taking some white acrylic paint and just splattering it all over so it looks like a bunch of fairy dust. Um, I haven't really decided where I'll go after I put the pan pastels down. But the great thing is, like, if this is where you want to call it good, you could just by putting this down because it's a very pretty color and I'll make sure to take a picture at the end just so you can see how the pan pastel looks because I know my camera can sometimes brighten things up. In fact, let me grab my washi tape. Okay, so I have my washi tape. Any washi tape. Doesn't matter on the color. This is literally just to save the page next to it. So I'm just gonna cut some. I'm going to stick it right here in between the pages like that, press it down, and that just gives me a little more um, room to work with. I'll just tuck it under. Washi tape is great, uh, it's better than scotch and painter's tape because it doesn't tear your pages, but then that way I can get down here with my tool and not worry about accidentally getting over there. You could use masking fluid, but uh, why? <laughs> uh, but if that's all you have, go for it. But washi tape is a little easier in this situation. Now, if I was using watercolor, I might do masking fluid because washi tape is not 100% sealed. So sometimes that watercolor would seep under there. But in this case, I'm not as worried about it. Definitely want more magenta mixed in here. And again, I'm using light pressure, which is really hard for me because I'm not a light-handed person. But this is one of those ones where you have to just be light-handed. Like I said, the tools are very delicate. But also, if you were to sit here and just scrape or use heavy pressure, you'll actually get lines. Whereas if you just lay it down gently, you're going to get a very pillowy look. So get in here. You can also use cotton swabs to remove any of the oopsies. Gently rubbing that in. Sometimes you have to go back and forth a lot. So I'm back to my purple. We're just going to say purple and pink. You know what colors I mean. But if for some reason, every time I try to say violet, I say violet. <laughs> so to avoid that, um, we're just going to say purple. Yeah, you can buy them open stock at Blick. Um, you can buy like the round tubes of like, oh, I think it's. 10 maybe on Amazon. The only problem is, is they come with a lot of white. So once you buy one set of tubes, you kind of need to start going to open stock because you don't need that much white. Um, and also like a single thing, a pan pastel is going to last you a very, very long time. I have done tons of backgrounds using the colors I have. And yeah, I'm, I haven't even put a dent in them. So just keep that in mind as well. So see how it's on my leaves here. You can always just take a cotton swab and brush it off because it is very movable at this stage. And that's why you'll want to do like a final check before you spray it with even a workable fixative because that workable does hold it down. It just doesn't hold it down as long. Once you're done with the page for good, you definitely want to do a final fixative. But the workable is great to keep it from moving. Like I often do that when I'm doing skin. And then that way 
I still have some playroom with it, like if I want to layer on top of it, but it's not um, like permanently fixed there. Okay, so I need to get over here, it looks like. Let's go in with some of our purple. Just very lightly roll that in there. Still have a bunch of accents to do this page, including with the mushrooms, but I just really wanted to jump on the background. Sometimes you just have to go where the art takes you. Like, yeah, my page isn't done. I'm going back to my pink now. My page isn't done, but oh my goodness, the zoom in and zoom out is driving me bonkers. Um, my page isn't done, but it's not a big deal because I can always go back. Okay, I'm going to overlap that a little and see how there's like purple on this side but not on this side. I'm going to take a very tiny bit on my brush, just kind of work it in here. That way it doesn't look like there's just a huge break. And just kind of work them around like that. Okay, and then I'm just going to gently remove any that I got on my colored pencil. Okay, so now let's finish up this bottom area. I'm going to start with my violet first. And this is a really messy medium, so that's why like, I have my craft mat down for sure. Okay, I'm going magenta now. And I suggest you protect your desk. Plan on getting it all over your fingers. You can't escape it, so you might as well just embrace it. No matter what direction you move, this stuff is going to get everywhere. I mean, you can actually manipulate this with your fingers if you want. If you don't want to use the tools, you could actually apply it with your fingers. I've watched people do it. In some cases, I would actually argue it looked better because, like, the oils from their fingers and all that just gave it a special look. Now, the lighter colors are the easiest for beginners to apply because when you get into the darker ones, if you're not using a very even, steady pressure, you'll actually get some funky lines and you'll definitely notice them. And those are instances where you'll need that colorless blender to come save you. <laughs> but the colorless blender is not like a magic fix-all. It does smooth everything out, but it doesn't like, it doesn't blend like a Coran Dash Blender, it's not going to buff everything out. So if you have a bunch of streaks or an uneven placement, you need to buff that out with an extra layer of your pastels before you worry about bringing in um, the Colorless Blender. And then, of course, the Colorless Blender does lighten everything up. So that's why I try to avoid using it, especially when I'm already using very light colors. I want to lighten them more. Let's see if I can't get in there. Let's see, it's a really quick and easy way. And this is just one mix, one way to apply it. You can actually use stencils. Like I could put stencils down and do a bunch of stencils. Um, there's just so many ways to apply pan pastels. And again, you can do this with a chalk pastel. Again, that look crease there. I used to use the Sargent Art chalk pastels for years until I started working with these and then I was just like, oh, I need these. They're just very soft and smooth. Got no complaints whatsoever. All right. I think we have most of our page covered. So what I'll do is zoom out and then kind of show you some finishing touches type of deal.
So as you can see, we have our little pillows of pink and purple. Kind of just like to look for anywhere I might be missing or I've got some uneven, like so I have some uneven spots up here I need to get. And I don't think this one will need, I'm gonna pull this up, a colorless blender. So I'll grab a little more purple, add that in here. And you can mix these. So like say I wanted to take my violet shade and my violet extra dark or violet um, tint. I could combine those two to make a different violet. Like if you don't want to spend a ton of money, then just get the basic color, some white, some grays, and blacks, and you can make your own tints and extra darks and shades. I, however, am lazy and I just want them already pre-made for me, so that's why I have them this way. Just trying to make sure I'm getting in these spots here. Yeah, with the lighting being kind of funky today, I'll definitely take a picture of this because I want you guys to really see, I want you guys to really see the colors of this. But yeah, I think this one is good to go and see that didn't really take too long to do, especially considering we are covering, let me move this back up, a pretty big page here. So... Look at all that white space I had to cover, and it's pretty quick and easy. So that's one thing to keep in mind. All that white space was covered pretty quickly. Now you can always take a brush, just make sure it's clean, and gently dust off any loose dust. I definitely suggest that before you go spray even a workable. Now see, this is what I mean about how movable these are. See how much, I don't know if it's gonna show it, but a bunch got picked up on my brush. So you have to be careful with that. Um, but always brush them off and then you know go around with your Q-tip or a kneadable eraser. I'm just lazy and don't feel like looking for my kneadable eraser, so Q-tip is what we're doing. But just use that anywhere you got some pan pastels. And then yeah, I'll be spraying this with a workable fixative. Now, just remember, if you spray it with a workable fixative, you really should not work on top of it for like 12 hours after. Depending on the brand, always read the can. Um, they usually tell you it's dry in so many hours and usable within so many hours. So there's a big difference between it being dry and usable. So I usually will spray this and wait overnight before I go and do whatever I'm going to do next. But I hope this helped you guys. I will leave links to these two colors if you want something super simple and whimsical. And then, like I said, I'll snap a picture so you can see this in a little bit of a better light. And that way you know what we're working on. But please let me know uh, what type of pan pastel tutorials you would like to see. I only did this one because I was already working on it. And I asked a few people, I was like, hey, do you want to see me finish this? And a few said yes. So I'm like, all right. <laughs> but... I do have tons of pan pastels and all the tools, so I'm more than happy to do any background you guys want to see, or you know, if you want to see more skin tutorials, I can definitely do those. So until next time, take care.